Hello? Can you hear me? Okay. Yes. To jumpstart, two quotes. Everything you can imagine is real. Pablo Picasso. Creativity is intelligence having fun. Albert Einstein. I believe that imagination and creativity are two ingredients absolutely necessary for the success of our today's event. My name is Oleg Vinskovsky. I am with Yuzhny Design Office of Ukraine, director of the European representations in Brussels. Uh, in the context of our today's event, uh, it's also important to mention that I am a member of the board of directors of the Moon Village Association in charge of the uh, Moon Market Development Coordination. Before I pass the floor to my ESA colleague, and this event is co-organized, as you might have realized, by Moon Village Association and European Space Agency, ESA, uh, I would like to give you a few uh, ideas about uh, what Moon Village Association uh, is doing and what its goal. So MVA is an international non-governmental organization based in Vienna. Our goal is to create a permanent global informal forum for stakeholders like governments, industry, academia, and the public interested in the development of the Moon Village. The MBA fosters cooperation for existing or planned global moon exploration programs with a public or private initiatives. Currently, we have uh, more than 200 individual members of 42 nationalities living in 39 countries and 25 institutional members around the globe. MVA partners with non-space organizations to promote international discussions on the relevant topics. And our today's event is a nice testimony to this. Now let me pass the floor to my ESA colleague, Donatella Ponziani. Donatella. Oleg, hello. Hello, hello. everybody. Um, can you hear me? Yes. Hello. Yes, OK. Um, thank you, Oleg. Thank you, everybody. Welcome to this uh, online seminar on non-space business goes to the moon. I am Donatella Ponziani, ESA Downstream Gateway Officer. I have the pleasure to be the moderator with Oleg of this session. The Downstream Gateway uh, meet the, the expectation and the, the objectives of the Moon Village Association because one of our role is to promote you know, space industry's involvement in space activities to find a mutual benefit for space and space industries cooperation in, uh, in the context of ESA uh, activities in downstream sector. Therefore, uh, the match was, uh, was there. Uh, we co-organized uh, these events. Uh, we are going to spend uh, together uh, one hour and a half. Um, following uh, uh, this small introduction, we will have uh, an inspirational uh, speech and uh, the view of uh, the Moon Village Architecture Scenarios and Associated Building Blocks by John Mankins, MBA Vice President, followed by an inspirational talk by Jan Werner, ESA Director General, and uh, the, um, followed by the, 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 script, the uh, um, discussion and the presentation of the non-space companies perspective uh, and non-space and space companies perspective. We will end uh, with a round the table discussion that I have, will have the pleasure to, to animate uh, with question and answer that uh, uh, those who are following us can leave uh, or those who are following on Zoom on a Zoom question and answer uh, part or for the others who are following us from Facebook on Facebook. And we are here to, uh, to, to answer to you 
uh, we will end up, Oleg, we will end up, we are wrap up, wrap up and we forward for our next uh, adventures. Now, without any further delay, I leave the floor to Oleg for the introduction of our speakers. Thank you very much, uh, Donatella. Already at this point, I have a message uh, to our uh, registered participants. Should you have some questions, uh, please uh, use the Q&A uh, button on your screen uh, during all the event. Thank you very much. Now, uh, with great pleasure, I pass the floor to John Mankins, Vice President of the Moon Village Association, uh, who will set the scene, in fact, with his presentation for our further discussions. John, please, the floor is yours. Thank you, Oleg. So good morning from California. It is a great pleasure to be uh, with all of you this morning here uh, and uh, this afternoon in Europe. Uh, uh, I would like to give you just a very brief overview of some of the Moon Village Association architecture studies uh, that are now ongoing and to highlight for you the opportunities uh, that we see uh, emerging for, uh, in particular, uh, non-space companies, uh, non-space uh, countries. So this is the, the, the past, the last 20 years, a relatively small number of uh, lunar missions, uh, one or two every year or two, uh, and then suddenly everything changed. Uh, due to the uh, discovery of something uh, quite unexpected, uh, namely uh, the presence of uh, uh, volatiles uh, in the very, very cold regions of the lunar poles. Uh, and now, as you can see, over the next uh, half a dozen years, there will be a wide variety of missions and activities, uh, eight or nine different countries, uh, many different companies, many different universities, um, many different types of missions, orders, flybys, landers, CubeSats, uh, rovers, sample returns, uh, leading uh, perhaps uh, by the middle of the next, of this decade, uh, to the human return to the moon. We have looked at the general uh, idea of the moon village uh, in terms of a variety of approaches. Uh, first and foremost, uh, we have looked uh, within the Moon Village Association at the idea that there might be different scenarios for how the Moon Village uh, and the humanity's extension to the Moon might proceed. Uh, we have a series, we have developed a series of, uh, of uh, scenarios, uh, which I will describe in a moment. And we have identified a taxonomy, a, a way of classifying the broad set of architectural elements that, um, into which all of the different systems that are needed for the moon could be developed. Uh, and within this framework of scenarios and this taxonomy, we have identified a variety of likely building blocks from which a moon village uh, will emerge. Uh, it is, of course, impossible to know the future precisely. Uh, uh, it is a great conceit to suppose that what we believe uh, the, the future of the moon will look like in five or 10 years will, in fact, be the reality. So we have defined a set of potential scenarios uh, with which to uh, extract uh, information about what the future on the moon might be like. Uh, scenario alpha is uh, let's suppose that the future of the moon is like uh, the International Space Station. Uh, namely, Scenario Alpha is a government human spaceflight program driven lunar activities. Scenario Beta is what if the moon is like Antarctica going forward? Uh, still government driven, but really driven by uh, science studies and uh, um, uh, not really so much by uh, uh, human spaceflight. And scenario gamma is private sector or private venture driven, namely that the ongoing innovations in technology which are driven by the private sector 
uh, tend to uh, enable and to create opportunities uh, concerning uh, cis lunar space and the moon itself. And we don't anticipate that any one of these is the real future. Rather, we see it as a, like a, a three-stranded DNA molecule where all of the strands come together and play a part in what, a, what the real future will be like. Within this framework, we've identified, uh, as I mentioned, a taconomy, a way of thinking about the categories of systems and functions, things like earth to orbit transportation, space to space transportation, surface systems on the moon, and so on. And these uh, broad uh, categories, these classes, these architectural elements, as we call them, provide a framework for thinking about, uh, as indicated by the dashed uh, red arrows, uh, a wide variety of indirect relationships among the systems within these classes. And lastly, I just to highlight very briefly that then within this framework, within these uh, responses to the different scenarios, human spaceflight, science, and uh, private uh, ventures, and within this taxonomy, we have identified a wide variety of critical functional uh, building blocks, things that must be done in order for, for the moon village to be a success. And as a consequence, uh, these are systems and functions which we believe represent real opportunities for commercial uh, and uh, uh, academic, academic innovators to play a role in, uh, in shaping the future. And one of the key things here is that many, many, many of these critical moon village building blocks have nothing to do with the uh, classic uh, uh, aerospace systems, the kinds of systems that came out of aviation and which have made important programs like the space station possible. Uh, things like physical waste uh, processing and recycling on the moon, dust mitigation, uh, networks, uh, Wi-Fi for lunar systems, uh, power generation on the lunar surface, uh, agricultural systems, biological waste, uh, a wide range of surface robotics in unstructured and structured environments, Medicare, uh, mining systems, uh, resource extraction and processing, uh, all of these and more are areas which are completely new and which we believe uh, uh, strongly will provide opportunities for non-space players to become involved. So with that, I would conclude. Uh, thank you very much for your kind attention. Uh, Oleg, uh, I turn the chair back over to you. Thank you so much, uh, John, for the very interesting vision. And uh, with the building blocks in place, uh, it gives me now a special pleasure to pass the floor to the man who invented the very term Moon Village, but more importantly, uh, who presented the Moon Village concept. Jan Werner, uh, Director General of the European Space Agency. Jan, please. Thank you very much, uh, Oleg, and uh, thank you very much, John, also for your introduction. In fact, it is uh, something like 13 years ago, that I was starting to discuss very openly about the, uh, the moon. And at that time, people were telling me, you are stupid, the moon is a dead rock, you should not do anything with the moon. But I was uh, really going forward, and based on uh, the words of a philosopher, um, I'm a civil engineer, so I don't understand this philosopher, but I think the words are quite nice. We will not cease from exploration until we come back to where we came from, and see the place for the first time. So I don't understand it, but I believe it's good if we have words like that. So as it was mentioned already, we have the International Space Station. It's a good example because it's international cooperation. And this is for me a very important point. And the other thing is, it is a science and technology in lowest orbit using microgravity uh, as a basis for research. And for the future, I think we need both. We need the international cooperation for exploration, and we need also near Earth, near um, Earth orbits for microgravity uh, experiments. So therefore, the idea was, okay, let's look into the universe where to go. What are the next destinations? And then when you 
some 13 years ago, there were people always talking about ultimate goals, ultimate destinations. And I think this is wrong because people never should be fixed by any ultimate destination. But of course, the question is where to go. And for ESA, we have defined three destinations for the exploration. It's the lowest orbit, it's Moon and Mars. But if we compare now Moon and Mars, we come to a very simple explanation. If you want to go to the Moon, you can do it during the summer vacation. You can go there and back within a week if necessary. If you go to Mars, you have to see it's really a different story. If we take today's technology and uh, we cannot change the orbit of Moon and Mars, the uh, overall journey uh, duration is something like two years. And that means we have totally different ideas, totally different bases for what we are doing. We have to consider different propulsions, safety and security aspects, health aspects, psychology, radiation and communication. So to go to the Mars, maybe something humans would like to do, but we really should be clear. It's a nice vision, but for the near future, it's not the best solution because of all these uh, limitations by technology. So we should work on it very fine. And some people say we should have boots on Mars. And of course, in Europe, they say we said we should have European, of, European boots on Mars. I'm ready to bring the boots, but not with humans so far. That means only the boots alone. Um, because what we need is totally different technologies as it was described, for instance, in the very famous movie 2001, a space odyssey there the hibernation was used for the people but you also know there was, that there was also some limitation and this was HAL 9000 um, therefore let's look back to the moon and here is a quote of a vice president of the united states of america he said we should go back to the moon i had a discussion with him about that and i told him that i'm not so happy with uh, his quote because back to the moon would mean we go to the moon exactly as uh, the Americans were doing 50 years ago in race in space, putting a flag on the moon and saying this is America. And I believe therefore next time we should go forward to the moon, meaning an international cooperation and not going back into the same scheme as 50 years ago. And this was the basic ideas. And yes, uh, Europe is part of this uh, activity so with the european service module for the american uh, heavy launcher sls with the capsule orion will pave the way to go to the moon to go first to the gateway and then from the gateway to the surface of the moon but now what to do on the surface of the moon and this is what i proposed already some 13 years ago i was talking about a multi-partner open concept and i explained it to a journalist explaining this is not one country going to the moon, but several countries. It is an open uh, activity, meaning there are no restrictions. Each and every one can participate, of course, with some limitations, but this should be the idea. And of course, it's a concept. It does not mean that we have a single mission for that. It's a concept which covers many different activities. And the journalist told me, multi-partner open concept, you cannot sell. You need a better narrative. And then the moon village was invented. So what is behind this word of moon village? This is important. The idea is, of course, the destination, very simple, that's the moon. But now look to the other word, the village. What is a village on earth? A village on earth is where different people come together with uh, different uh, interests, but they, they merge all their interests at a certain location. So might, maybe a baker, maybe somebody who wants to open a bar, uh, and maybe also an undertaker or whatever. So therefore, the village idea means to bring different actors together. In this case, bring them together on the surface of the moon. And therefore, it should be free and open access, no fences, no uh, special borders, but uh, an international activity. And then there are very many things one can do. So it should be international. It should be human and robotic, as we heard right now with the alpha, beta, gamma scenarios. It should be public and private. It should be space and non-space. It should be exploration, pioneering. It should be also there to, out, to have an outreach. It can do science, com cosmology, fundamental research. You see a long list, but also communication, transportation, and it should be also a, a stepping stone to go further on. And therefore, going forward to the moon is something where different uh, countries, different actors can work together 
um, as Jan can see in this picture. There are several, many, many ideas, various ideas. So for instance, uh, to build an observatory on the far side of the moon, because uh, in the shadow of the moon, so to say, not on the dark side, uh, but on the far side of the moon, uh, we can build observatories uh, where you do not have the interaction with uh, radiation coming from the Earth. So you would have a much better picture. But already this picture shows that there is different disciplines coming together because this time one would not bring all the stuff from the Earth, but one would use the material over there to build the observatory so the resource, uh, resources should be used. There are companies already developing now on a private base communication uh, satellites, communication links to the Earth, and also there are uh, activities looking for building infrastructure on the surface of the Moon. I got many, many requests. I got requests from individuals asking they would like to be the mayor of that uh, uh, village and so on. But also I got from a, a, a Scandinavian a company this picture. We have the right houses for the surface of the Moon. So I think we should work on that a little bit more. For me, it was also interesting that this uh, idea of a village on the Moon is now accepted by many players. So for instance, here you see Jeff Bezos. He was saying in 2017 that he has a vision for a city on the moon. Uh, so this is a nice word, of course, a little bit bigger than just a village. For me, it's very important. We are not looking to have a colony on the moon, meaning that we move people from the Earth for the rest of their life to the moon because the Earth is much too beautiful. Um, and we should not argue that we can leave the moon, uh, the Earth, when we destroyed it and we have another place to go. So therefore, I, I would like to say, yes, we, want, we should use the moon for research, but not for permanent stay. There's another one, you know all of that, this is uh, Elon Musk. He said also in the uh, IAC in Adelaide um, that he would like also go to the moon, or so he was always arguing for uh, Mars, but now he's also saying, and with a nice quote, the moon base alpha, he said, we should go to the moon. So there are many possibilities for the non-space sector, for the space sector as well. And don't forget that what we are doing here is also something for, in, for the uh, society at large. Because space missions, whatever you do, is something which is fascinating. Fascinating is a positive move in our brain. And therefore, a positive move in our brain is something we need at these times especially. So if you are fascinated, you can be inspired. And if you are inspired, you can be motivated. And that means from a point of view of a societal view that uh, space is really impacting the whole society in a positive sense. And therefore, I believe that uh, the Moon Village has the power to really change the society. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Jan, for the inspirational and thought-provoking uh, talk, as usual. Uh, now, uh, I propose to move to the presentations, to the target audience of our today's event, that is to non-space companies. I should tell you that we have prepared a very nice menu consisting of two types of kitchen, the European one and the Asian one. And I am going to alternate the two. Uh, that said, uh, I uh, give the floor uh, to um, Enrico Dini, D-shape company, which provides you with the Italo-British flavor. Enrico? Hello, everybody. You hear me? Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, good, uh, good evening from Italy. I am the, uh, the president of the Shape, more like UK the Shape, and uh, I'm glad to join this initiative, uh, which I've been pursuing since uh, 14 years. And uh, I wanted to talk to you about potential solution in interior design for the moon using a, a lunar regolith. Just a, a quick. Uh, uh, introduction about uh, uh, our background. I'm uh, uh, an inventor. I invented in 2004 a machine to uh, print uh, soil in 3D to make uh, a conglomerate building structure. And 
This is an invention that became quite uh, famous in the world in the past. And uh, some uh, in 2007, uh, Professor Rupert Soar, listening about uh, the modularity of our 3D printing machinery, suggested that uh, this kind of equipment might be put into a rocket to and go to the moon to print homes. And I thought to myself that this would, might be the biggest uh, waste of time that afternoon that I, I might have had in Lapro University. But at some point I realized that maybe this was, wasn't a bad idea. So I called you know, the European Space Agency, Professor uh, Scott Offland, and I suggested the possibility that uh, rather than going uh, colonizing the moon with uh, metal tanks and, uh, and uh, metallic uh, elements, we might print homes using lunar regolith. And uh, he uh, suggested me to, uh, to join, uh, to, end, to subscribe the, into the uh, supply of the um, ESA suppliers, and uh, I formed a consortium. And when the, there was a call for ideas, about what going to put to start into a rocket within the Aurora project, uh, I submitted the concept of this very basic concept of uh, this uh, machinery with a rover and uh, and a printer, and then uh, helped by Foster and Partners in London, we turned these uh, very rough schematics into a more rational concept with an inflatable structure covered, sheltered by moon dust, bond with a binder, eventually imported by Hertz. And since then, we moved toward a landscape imagination that became quite famous. And then we were awarded, the, our role, our task to, was to print in 3D something using a lunar soil. And of course, uh, I had the two chance procuring the regular simulant in US or, e or here in Italy. And here in Tuscana, there are some very old volcans. One of those is rich of uh, Martian regolith, and the other one is uh, a query where we have an abundant availability of lunar simulant, which is basically pozzolanic ashes, and using and treating this kind of uh, soil inside a vacuum chamber in Pisa, we printed the, the first uh, uh, 3D printed uh, uh, um, regolith voxel using a very, uh, an equipment into a deep vacuum chamber. And then we delivered a, a fair the technical demonstrator to uh, Laurent Pomboyan at the European Space Agency. And uh, this was the end of the story, but I wanted to do more and to provocate and really contribute to start up the, uh, the rush to the moon. So at our own expenses, uh, we printed a portion of the moon shelter designed by Foster and Partner. And then, and excuse me, please. May I interrupt you? Yes, uh, please. Are you going to show us some slides? Yes. Because You see, pardon? Not yet. You haven't seen? No. You haven't seen the presentation? Not, no, not oh. yet. We saw you all the time. Oh. You see now? Yes, indeed. Oh, gosh. That's time. I apologize. So back to the beginning. We have been awarded today by the ESA for the the contract to print a home on the moon. This is the concept developed by Foster and Partner. And this is the development of the renderings. And as I said, we procured the regolith on here in Tuscany and uh, on an on a empty volcan in uh, Toscana, in Bolsena Lake, we procured the regolith simulant. And uh, helped by CTEL in Pisa, they, they have a, a deep vacuum jumper. We printed uh, the uh, first uh, 3D printed element, which is a voxel. 
And then the, our task was to deliver a technical demonstrator, basically a, a, a brick 3D printed. And they wanted, as I said earlier, to print bigger. So we, uh, we self-funded the, the printing of a big element, which today, nowadays, is uh, in uh, at the European Space Agency at ESTEC in Norvike. And, uh, and now about the topic of uh, our next goal is that uh, maybe because I'm an inventor focusing on the manufacturing of uh, uh, furniture, we might use regulate to produce uh, lightweight materials using uh, expandable polymers. And uh, basically the concept and the equipment we are willing to propose uh, is a uh, is an equipment that is capable to mix a regulate simulant as a filler together with expanding polymers. And uh, the, you may have been, you have been seem familiar with this kind of uh, expanding material. And uh, this way we produce several items, uh, soft items like those one using a, a regulate simulant as a filler. We can produce a very lightweight materials or even rubber material and so forth. So these are, these are studies that we presented at the last workshop, uh, last July, 2018, at the workshop toward the use of lunar resources. And uh, so the idea that might be interesting to exploit and to investigate is to produce uh, furniture apart building blocks, of course, for exterior design, but basically building sofas, benches, stairs, and furniture in general for all might be to print um, um, satellites using this kind of method, but this is just a, a provocation. I apologize for having missed and to, uh, the sharing the screen, which I supposed to have shared, and I conclude my presentation. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Enrico. We appreciate your effort to be just on time. Uh, now, uh, we are moving to Japan, and I invite uh, Takayo Ono of the Kajima uh, Corporation to share his views on how a big construction company could help us to feel as comfortable on the surface on the moon as we uh, do feel here on Earth. Uh, Ono-san, please. Thank you. <clears throat> Can you hear me? Okay. Yes. <clears throat> A space architecture creating 1G field in a lunar lava tube. Takuya Ono, Japan. I belong to Kajima Corporation, general contractor, architectural design department. This is Luna Grass. Now, people laugh at me. <laughs> in the future, where human beings live in space, there will be not only astronauts, but also their family members. Naturally, they will give birth and raise their children in space. Humans who grown up under low gravity conditions will not be able to stand on their own feet on the Earth. And another problem is that whether we can raise our children without Earth's gravity. When we live in space, we will spend our daily life at rotating artificial gravity facilities. While only for our business and leisure time, we will stand on the surface of the moon or Mars. The artificial gravity network will also promote the unity of humankind. Well then, how do we create the 1G same gravity condition at the Earth? 
First, as you can imagine, rotational cylinder. I show you a round design using this method. I'm dreaming of listening to a wonderful concert, viewing the beautiful earth there. The combination of acceleration of moon gravity and that based on centrifugal force has to be 1g. The gravity there is about one sixth times as much as the acid. You need to increase the gravity a little more by rotation. Bonding the floor panels accordingly to lunar curves forms lunar grass architecture. Very beautiful equation. Architecture on the moon, it is runa grass. Runa resistance is cutaway section, runa ocean spending time on the board. We want to create delightful spaces on the moon. After Luna grass built, there should be built the transportation systems between the grasses. Mass driver, exchanging of potential energy and kinetic energy. Side rails guided trucks, which is not disturbing the ground surface. And their trajectory must be designed based on the comfortable jerks. On the moon, other than low gravity, there is another problem, sheltering. Radiation exposure, meteorite impact, air tightness, temperature change. We set the construction site inside the lava hole and tube which are found at mere tranquilitaritis by Japanese orbiting satellite Kaguya, Selen. Airlock dome, filled with water and it will block space radiation. Being rotating architecture, runa grass under the airlock dome. Runa grass interior, residential area for daily life. Total image of moon bridge, cowway section. We propose safe and dreadful places on the moon. The next field is in the space. Remember, Takuya Ono, Kajima Corporation General Contractor. Mail address takutaku -A -A -K -U at kajima.com. Thank you very much for kind attention. Thank you very much indeed, uh, Takuya, for a very impressive and colorful presentation. <laughs> now, now from residence. <laughs> I from Mars residence. Okay, great. So uh, now we are moving back to uh, Europe and I invite Quarantaine UO, uh, representative of the Deep Lunar uh, company uh, Luxembourg, to present uh, his views on possible contribution of non-space industry to the development of the Moon Village. Please, Quarantaine. Yes, hi everyone. Just a second and just share my screen. Okay, can you see it? Yes. Good. So good evening from Luxembourg. I'm Corentin, one of the co-founders of Deep Lunar, a project that emerged during the lockdown a couple of months ago. So uh, today 
the the word is going is one sorry the word wants to come back to the moon and uh, they actually did a long time ago but now it's a real thing uh, all the countries all around the globe are going back there um for us europe has a central place here um at deep Lunar, we strongly believe that europe will be the next space big player but coming to transportation we just uh, saw a few uh, new players that are disrupting the market. There, for instance, SpaceX, Origin, Relativity Space, or Rocket Lab. They're setting the stage of the future of launch providers. But if you look at SpaceX, they're reducing the cost with maximum. But at Deep Lunar, we do think that uh, Europe can do the same, and that's what we want to do. If we are able to print uh, rockets, make them modular and fully reusable, we know that we could reduce the cost per kilo to its maximum and bring all the stuff you need on the moon surface and make this moon village come true. Come true, sorry. Um, this is not rocket science here because all the technologies are already existing. For instance, printing a rocket uh, in 3D, it's possible, Just you just need the printer. But at Deep Lunar, we think that if we use the right tools, the right processes by being focused on the cost reduction, we will be able to send like everything on the moon surface in a very short term, just a couple of years, I think, a decade. But how we will do it? Um, for us, first, we need to democratize space and make it affordable for, for everyone. So in a couple of years, we want to be able to bring your payload to a low Earth orbit for a very cheap price, even cheaper than SpaceX if possible. Second, uh, we want to standardize deep space transportation platform and make your payload available in Earth orbit or lunar orbit in a couple of years. And first, third, sorry, um, we want to make space available for everyone on the moon and open the last frontier. This means that we can bring uh, the payload on the moon and also beyond. So uh, Mars, why not? But for, but for the moment, that's only on the moon. Um, we are very thrilled about doing this project. I'm, I'm being very short, I'm sorry. But as I mentioned, this company is a very early stage company and we know that we can do it. And we know that Deep Lunar is able to bring um, this ID and this mood village to um, come true. So we're looking for investors. So if you want to discuss with it, you can contact us if you want. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, thank you very much, Corentin. I believe there will be some questions to you to uh, clarify in more details what you are going to do and how to uh, uh, overwhelm SpaceX with your technology. But now uh, we are back to uh, Asia, and I am pleased to give the floor to Varis uh, Chancheroin, uh, Space Zap Company, Thailand. Varis? Yes. Good evening and good afternoon in, in some prayers of the world. Uh, let me share my screen. Okay, my name is uh, Wales from Space Up Company in Thailand. Oh, can you see the full screen? Okay. My name is Wales from Space Up Company in Thailand. Uh, it's a very great pleasure for, uh, for us uh, that the space app team to be invited to present uh, our story to space people all over the world uh, and space app what is space app company uh, space app is the deep space technology company from thailand as the emerging space country right? as as everyone know we always believe that uh, we we should focus on the development of human resources at first so it's the essential step uh, to help to bring uh, humanity to develop a necessary technology to to space mission especially the emerging space country like like us like thailand so why we are building the the human resources we shall bring back the valuable knowledge uh, return to to the earth as well that there are two areas that uh, our focusing group are uh, research and industry especially uh food and agriculture industry so this ex explains our motto, uh, bridging citizen to space from education, uh, research, and, and industry at the last. First of all, let me introduce the, the education sector. We have the Space Lab program. Space Lab is the name of, uh, of, the, of this series of space education. Space Lab program was initiated 
as an online education class uh, that teach how space technology can relate to, to our daily life. Yeah. The topics of the class range from space food, how to make space food, space agriculture, space architecture to, to build a uh, house on, on the moon, and even space fashion that focus on how, how to properly design available device aesthetic space suits in the future. Therefore, the, the success story of, of, of this program shows that there is a large audience, especially non-space people, non-science people that enjoy space study. And, and we believe that uh, they could contribute to develop space technology in the near future. And, and they are our human resources in, in Thailand, in space tech, in terms of space technology. And apart from that, for the research earlier, we start from the concept idea of 3D food printing in space and launch some mechanical sensors and mechanical device as the passive payload with Blue Origin New Shepherd uh, in 2018, uh, supported by MuSpace Corporation, also one of the, the space companies in Thailand as well. And next year, it, uh, in, in this slide is 2019, but uh, we have some, some problem with COVID-19 crisis. So we propose the launch to, to be next year. We have planned to launch the, the, the some parts of mixing modules of 3D food printing to International Space Station. And, and this project supported by uh, GISDA. Uh, someone knows GISDA is the Thailand Space Organization that, that our plan to, to develop the 3D food printer. And one fun fact uh, is that our space name uh, our company's name is SAP, SPARE and SAP. SAP is Thai language. Thai language, uh, SAP is, means spicy, spicy taste. And, and that's why our first uh, concept of the product was a 3D food binder because it's related to the food. And apart from that, uh, for, for the in, uh, apart from the in-space research, we have set up the cloud experiment as well. The land-on positioning machine, someone know, is called the Kinostat machine. Some Thai researchers have success to develop the technology to remove the toxics by painting using the microgravity environment. By by technical support from us, they successful to develop this technology and, and publish in Extra Astronautica just uh, on May this year. If you are interested in this topic, you, you can Google this paper later. But for the industrial size, the Thailand Lunar Simulan program is our main, our main ongoing research project now, and that aims to produce lunar simulant in Thailand. The team successfully manufactured the first batch of simulant that have almost exactly the same properties uh, as the moon lock uh, from the Apollo 11 mission. Maybe you can see from this. Just a tiny thing. This project is going to be the first a lunar simulant produced in Thailand, and we aim to distribute it to board professional researchers around the world, and as well as the private ventures worldwide. If you want to uh, try the Thailand lunar simulants, uh, we can help you to 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 do the in situ studies in order to develop the lunar exploration. Now, some Thai researchers are trying to plant and mine the essential mineral from from our simulant as well. Apart from the institute listers, apart from the science, our artists, artists in the team are trying to develop spare toy. As you can see in the left bottom, spare toy using our lunar simulant. But why? In order to make space touchable for everyone, especially for the emerging space country, it doesn't mean everyone loves space. It's take a lot of money. So we have to light the awareness, make space touchable for everyone. That's why we, we produce the, the, the space toy that using Lunar Simulant. And it might, might be sold on the eBay or Amazon as soon as you can order that if you want to pay it and uh, send it to, to your student. And lastly, uh, we, we really appreciating your, your time here. And we hope that our story will further prove the concept uh, of ongoing space research. And if you have any question, you can uh, contact me directly by, by this email, contact at spacehub.com. And the new space life is now, it's not the future. 
and everyone can help us to contribute to it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Varas. Very impressive and versatile activities. Now, uh, having heard from four unknown space businesses, uh, we invite everybody to have a look at the presentation by uh, another European company, but in this case, well-established uh, European heavyweight in direct and, and indirect sense. I'm uh, referring to the Ariane Group and its uh, CTO, Hervé Gilibert. Hervé, please. Hervé? We can't hear you, Hervé. Can you hear me now? Now, yes, please. Okay, good. Uh, so, uh, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I'm relying on someone to present my chart. Thank you, thank you very much, as my IT is not uh, working very well. So, uh, as you say, so we are a kind of legacy uh, company in, uh, in the field of space uh, activity, uh, legacy actor in, in space as an Ariane Group company, but we, as you will see in my, in my short presentation, we, we are not doing that al alone. Uh, we are working a lot with uh, non-space uh, actors and also with uh, startups, uh, I would say, from the new space wave uh, these days. What I will do now is to give you a, a little view on what we are doing, what we are preparing, most of the time together with the European Space Agency, uh, about uh, transportation to the moon, as, as you can see it on this chart, we uh, are uh, a space transportation uh, actor. We are just an enabler uh, of the activities of the business that will be done uh, in space, that will be done on the moon uh, particularly. So we are the ones who develop and who operate the Ariane 5 today launcher and very soon the Ariane 6 launcher. But we are the, also the ones uh, in the middle of this picture who develop propulsion solutions for all types of missions in space, chemical propulsion, electric uh, propulsion. And uh, in the very center of this picture, you can also see that we are delivering uh, the propulsion system of the Orion multipurpose crew vehicle, uh, which is uh, the, uh, the service module uh, that will uh, enable uh, the moon missions uh, with NASA in the, in the next years. And we develop also uh, very advanced space products for, um, for launchers and for uh, satellites and for probes uh, for, um, uh, for the universe exploration. On the next slide, uh, just an illustration, just waiting for the slide. On the next slide, you will see uh, an illustration of a concept we have introduced uh, some years ago. We have performed uh, uh, work which is very similar to the one that has been uh, that has been presented uh, by John at, at the very beginning. Uh, this is a scenario planning activity which has not led to a scenario alpha, beta, and gamma, but to three scenarios that, that are very similar to the ones you you have uh, described, uh, John, and which have led us to envision the future the future where a space around uh, the Earth. Uh, will be um, an area where there will be uh, various nodes, various hubs uh, present on various types of orbits, so the geosynchronous orbit close to, to the Earth, but also the, the Moon orbit, uh, the Mars orbit a bit uh, further. All these orbits will be settled, will be occupied by uh, space uh, assets in our view in the future to perform the missions that are given on the, uh, the left-hand side uh, from navigation to uh, mining and going through a human flight, uh, of course. And for this uh, future journey, uh, future endeavor in space, we are preparing, uh, again, most of the time together with uh, ESA, uh, we are preparing the spacecraft and the space vehicle of the future, as you can see in the middle uh, of the chart, uh, kick stage for very uh, polyvalent missions to be performed from one orbit to an another orbit. Uh, example given. Going to the next uh, chart, uh, I will uh, 
maybe uh, repeat and illustrate also what was said earlier by uh, John, just to let us realize how much uh, the interest for Moon has been growing uh, in the current uh, decade. If we look at the past decade on the left-hand side, uh, so 10 years ago we were speaking, we were dealing only with six Mars missions, eight lunar missions, okay. Uh, in the uh, current decade, this is a matter of 10 Mars missions, no, no strong evolution, but 50 lunar missions that are envisioned uh, from everywhere in the world. And as you can see on the right hand side, uh, a lot of money, a lot more money uh, planned for this decade than in the, the past one. And interesting enough, two, two elements, uh, a bit less proportion of budget coming from the US, which means that Asia and uh, Europe uh, particularly uh, are investing more or uh, are foreseeing to invest more in that field. And the moon exploration, which was uh, in the fifth position uh, some years ago, is now in the third position in the terms of ranking of the missions and the investments. So uh, this is clearly a trend, a growing trend we, we are facing. Next chart is to show you that uh, together with uh, our uh, subsidiary in charge of uh, launch services, uh, which name is uh, Ariane Space, quite well-known uh, space launches uh, operator, uh, we have already started to uh, put uh, an offer uh, on the market. Uh, so for any of you who would have a mission to, to place uh, to the moon, we are uh, offering uh, ride share uh, options uh, on the Ariane 6 uh, launcher under our ferry, uh, either for very small uh, payloads, very small satellites or rovers or whatever uh, that would be uh, secondary payloads, or as a main payload, as, illust as illustrated, sorry, on the on the right uh, hand side. So this brings me now to um, two last. Uh, pictures. Uh, the first one to, um, to show one aspect of our uh, work together with startups and in that case this is a uh, work we have been performing uh, for the benefit of ESA again uh, in the recent months uh, with a startup uh, which name is uh, uh, Planetary Transportation Systems, PTS, so partner we had. Uh, together, uh, which uh, has shown, this study has shown that we, there is a possibility we, we could build uh, public-private partnerships uh, to uh, have uh, missions to, to the moons together with uh, uh, big uh, legacy actors like us, uh, together with the agency, of course, and uh, with uh, small medium enterprise and uh, startups. Uh, we have proven uh, the interest and the versatility, the polyvalence of our Ariane 6 uh, launcher for the right share missions uh, I mentioned uh, just uh, before. And uh, in fact, all of this has, uh, I would say, um, generated an influence to us, in fact, to influence the evolutions we will bring in the future, uh, in the, the first years of its life for the Ariane 6 uh, launcher and to increase and to yes to increase the the, the capability it will have uh, for missions to the lun lunar uh, surface so we are already driven in our perspective of evolutions of uh, Ariane 6 we are already driven by, by the moon last uh, chart is uh, to give you uh, a view on another uh, aspect uh, of our approach to to the moon and uh, coming back to my notion of uh, logistics, space logistics, I mentioned uh, earlier. We are presenting here uh, a kind of end-to-end -end view on a mission we could provide to, again, to anyone uh, willing to go to the moon and to perform some experiment or some, let's say, industrial or whatever activity uh, on the moon. So starting with uh, our launch service with the IN6 uh, launcher, taking advantage of a uh, very specific um, uh, spacecraft that is uh, today uh, um, a program by ESA, which name is uh, Heracles 
EL3, European Large Logistic Lander, EL3. Uh, we have been working on potential payloads uh, that could be used, that could be taken on board of the EL3. And this, the name, the nice name of our study is uh, Pelican, Production of Energy in Lunar Infrastructure, Communication and uh, Navigation. And as you can see illustrated uh, via the two little uh, pictures, uh, this is, uh, these are two examples among uh, many others. We have been uh, analyzing the possibility to, to, to bring to the moon uh, surface power, surface power via, uh, example given, uh, radio thermoelectrical uh, generators. Uh, we have been working uh, in that field uh, together with uh, ESA on the safety aspect, uh, when it is a matter of a nuclear uh, radioisotope generator. Uh, it is a matter of, uh, there are some safety states, of course, uh, on the launch pad uh, and later. So all of this has already been uh, analyzed. Uh, with such a generator, we could generate very smart uh, laser communications already, also already uh, analyzed. And uh, on the right hand side, the last picture, uh, will bring us uh, close to uh, what uh, Enrico Dini at the beginning and a uh, bit also Corentin uh, uh, you have been saying about the uh, use of um, the regolith. Uh, so by uh, the adequate mining uh, on the moon, we could uh, produce uh, energy, of course, infrastructures, uh, but also energy, rocket uh, propellant uh, based on hydrogen and oxygen, we could uh, uh, take out from uh, water there and having propellant uh, there for our rockets, possibly uh, uh, 3D printed uh, on site to some extent with uh, the uh, deep lunar uh, solutions. So with uh, all of that, uh, we have the starting point of the nice space logistics endeavor and the ability to build up rocket elements and to uh, have rockets restarting from the moon to come back to Earth or to go further in space. So thank you very much for your attention on that. Thanks a lot, Hervé. Uh, very impressive presentation and uh, array of activities. And with this, I have a pleasure of uh, passing over the baton to Donatella Ponziani for the roundtable discussion. Donatella. Oleg, thank you very much. Thank you to all the distinguished speakers for your presentation. I would like to start with a first question to Enrico Dini of eSpace. Enrico, uh, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, Enrico, you are an inventor. And uh, uh, it is very inspirational for many businesses that are following us. But what are the key drivers of your business? What is the good balance among uh, uh, a vision and uh, the budgetary constraint of running a new business in, uh, in an, an explored field? Well, Donatella, I'll be honest with you. This is not a business for me still on the moon. I'm still oriented to make business on Earth so far. However, it's a good question. The driver as on Earth is to keep things simple in being, making business, especially for moon space, because there are so many difficulties in sending stuff uh, out, of the, uh, out of Earth for reason of uh, loads and costs and so forth. So the driver of the business for me is to try to propose uh, an equipment, a process and, uh, and a balance of using local materials and important materials from Earth that can, as an inter intermediate stage, uh, be reasonable for, uh, for a colonizing activity rather than uh, in living activities in the next decades. So the driver of the business is to propose a package uh, uh, compact, lightweight, uh, reasonably affordable and reliable. So these are the, the driver of the future moon business uh, and willing to join the moon villas for applying, making furniture. And of course, giving contribution for 3D printing architecture, but this is another nice uh, toy to play with. Thank you very much, uh, Enrico. And, uh, uh, um, a question for uh, Takuya. 
Uh, Takuya, can you hear us? Oh. Okay. Uh, you gave a vision on uh, space architecture, but there are challenges uh, on uh, space architecture that challenges the rules of a classical architecture and foster new cooperation because you were mentioning several uh, hurdles and several constraints that you have to take into account. How the design phase uh, is conceived for, uh, for space architecture? What are, uh, who takes part to, this, uh, to, this, uh, to the building of this vision? Okay. Uh, the first, <clears throat> hi, can you hear me? The business of general contractors in Japan, we did not create and sell our own product like machine makers. However, we have the know-how in the comfort of the living space. I want to make use of that wisdom. If the conditions such as the ground and the environment are clarified, we think that the design in possible is possible. We have the skills to integrate various different industries and com complete one building. Thank you. It is my answer. Thank you very much, uh, Takuya. And uh, now I would like to ask uh, a different question to Corentin, Corentin uh, Wu from Deep Lunar. Quentin, are you here? Yes, I hear you. Um, you are presenting, uh, representing a, a startup who is, uh, you, you, you end your presentation saying that you are looking for investors. And you started your presentation telling us that the space business to the moon is, uh, is the, the, the new uh, Eldorado for, for Europe. So what, should, what motivates investors to invest in this business? And uh, on the top of it, can you give a little bit more information? Perhaps uh, we, we interest the investor on what you are, you are planning okay. to do. That's a, that's a tough one. But uh, yeah, um, for space providers, there is a lot of players now. And uh, as I mentioned, SpaceX is reducing the cost to its maximum. But uh, for us, what can interest investors is for me, for us, two things. Uh, first, we want to reduce the cost to the maximum. So by doing it, uh, maybe it could interest more investors than um, than uh, for other players. Um, secondly, um, for us, Moon is the ace continent. And uh, we aim to make it accessible for everyone. And, and we're really uh, cost focused. And we are really sure that if we focus on a fully 3D printed rocket uh, with a little R and D, uh, just only what you need uh, with the cheapest materials. You can do something very cheap but very reliable too. So that's that's our goal. That's our value proposition here. Um, and moreover, we want to be really customer centric, which means that if you want to send something to the moon or on, on Mars, I don't know, um, by 3D printing the rockets, we can do a really a custom made rocket for you, uh, which will be fully reusable if you want to bring something else in a couple of months later. Thank you very much. And now I, I, I go for my last question, no, for, not for my last, for my following question to uh, Space Dub. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. Hello. Um, in your presentation, it's evident, but it was evident also in other presentations that the use of in situ resources uh, seem, is a one of the key elements of a sustainable business on the, on the, for the Moon Village. Uh, what is the role of research on Earth to better prepare the life of the Moon? Okay, thank you for your question. Uh, I, I, I will answer your question uh, in terms of the emerging space country like Thailand. Uh, according to, to my talk, uh, we are trying to optimize how to plant on the moon using uh, lunar simulant and how much added water, how much added mineral to plant and how, how to extract the essential mineral from, from the lunar log itself, like 
how how much the the potassium nitrogen or or, or phosphorus that have to add in order to plant some something, and especially we we are trying to plant Thai herbs and Asia herbs. Uh, you might recognize that uh, some Thai and and or Asian herbs are the part of the medicines as well as well. You you might be know about this that that's the important law. Uh, in terms of the uh, Thailand uh, space activities, like we, we want to plan the Thai herbs uh, in order to uh, instill the, the, the real medicines uh, be, be, because we, we don't need astronauts to eat medicine every day. So just eat the food as the medicines. That's our, uh, our law, our key law of the research. Uh, on the earth as well, it can bring back to the humanity. Uh, uh, to cure, to to take care uh, instead of instead of to eat the the, the real medicines, uh, eat just the food. That that the, the law of the research on Earth about the, the simulant. That that our answer. Thank you very much, um, Hervé, uh, I have a question for you. Actually, I have a couple of questions for you uh, from the. <laughs> the audience as well. Uh, my first question is, uh, what are the key success factor of a sustainable business model for space transportation component in the Moon Village ecosystem? How are you going to make okay. money out? <laughs> yes, uh, can you hear me? Is it correct for you? Yes, perfectly. Okay, very good. Uh, so, um, so the very first success factor, or the, the very first need is that uh, there is a how can I say, uh, an economy, an ecosystem uh, uh, with, uh, with the, the moon, a goal for transportation. Uh, I was speaking of space logistics some minutes ago. Space logistics means uh, that there is a need for moving uh, goods from one place to, to another or for going to one place uh, to, uh, to uh, exploit or to use locally uh, the, the resources. So the first point is to have uh, a real life in brackets uh, on the moon, should it be uh, with uh, automatic activities, uh, should it be with um, uh, humans uh, there, should it be for mining or any kind of in situ resources uh, utilization. And for this, uh, in fact, we will be uh, the ones who will uh, enable uh, teams like the ones of uh, Enrico Dini or the, the, the ones of uh, Space Lab to to, to go there uh, and to develop their own business, their own activity uh, there, uh, living, of course, in the lunar glass, uh, which is a very nice concept by, uh, by our colleagues from, uh, from Thailand. Uh, so once we have the market, the need, uh, then this is uh, like in every uh, industrial activity uh, of that kind. Uh, this is a matter of finding the good solutions uh, in a global approach to optimize the service uh, we will uh, provide to optimize, of course, the cost of the transportation uh, service. So this is a classical situation. Uh, there is a need, there is a market, then it is a matter of uh, cost effectiveness by uh, anyone. In my view, uh, for the moon particularly, and not to be uh, too long, this will go with uh, some, um, how can I say, some uh, good, uh, good ideas or good tricks to be, uh, to be, uh, to be considered by working at first on common uh, building blocks between uh, terrestrial activities and space transportation uh, activities, terrestri terrestrial space transportation and moon uh, transportation. Uh, the propulsion systems uh, have no reason to be very different. So we might have um, a, a good economy via um, reuse of uh, systems that have been developed on Earth. Landing landers and ascenders are not very different from rockets uh, taking off from uh, from the earth. So the technologies will be uh, will have to be common, and some building blocks like engines will obviously be uh, common, and this will uh, bring uh, the uh, relevant savings uh, in the approach. Uh, then this is this. There will be also um, uh, an idea which is to exploit the uh, in situ uh, resources to use them to get propellant as i said earlier from uh, from the moon uh, there must be at the end of the day there must be a fueling uh, service uh, 
uh, offered there for for the for the rockets. Uh, there must be also there will be in, in my view in the future also fueling service in orbit on other orbits than only uh, the one uh, of the moon uh, geostationary orbit uh, uh, or whatever and the uh, last point would be to to refer to um, a kind of optimized approach of travel in space the moon being one node uh, among a few uh, other ones to the one node uh, which will be used to minimize the energy, the resources needed to travel from one point to, to another. Going to Mars, to Mars, uh, from uh, the Earth is uh, very heavy in terms of uh, resources needed. The Moon is a good intermediate uh, position to minimize, uh, so in our uh, domain we, we say minimize the delta V uh, the, the speed increment to be uh, delivered by a rocket. If we do it by steps and uh, furthermore, if we refuel uh, on the, the node, which is the moon, to go to, to Mars, this will be uh, all benefit in terms of sizing and costs uh, of our uh, systems. So that's my, my answer. I could elaborate for much longer time, uh, Donatella. Thank you. There is one question from from the public. Uh, they they ask uh, where we could learn more about the Pelican project, and uh, if you can provide some details on the communication of or and the navigation part of it. I don't know if we can okay. do it, uh, or we can, uh, um, we can provide. The Yes, uh, one, uh, two simple answers. The, the first one is to say uh, our project is public and I think it is accessible in the uh, ESA databases. So uh, some, some data uh, are available uh, there. So we could bring the link, uh, of course. The second point, so to make it very short about communication and navigation. Communication, what we have in mind is to use also the laser systems that I showed uh, earlier. They, they were presented on my chart uh, to be uh, used for power distribution from uh, the, the radio, the uh, RTG uh, generator to any uh, device uh, on the moon, any site or any rover that would have to be fed uh, with uh, electrical uh, power, uh, especially during the night uh, phase, the 14 days uh, nights uh, on the moon. Uh, so laser communication in, in our view between all assets uh, there. And regarding uh, navigation, what we have in mind is to put um, some um, some devices uh, in the areas that will be occupied for uh, for human or robotic activities that will allow very precise landing. This is a kind of uh, augmentation of uh, GNSS capacities or navigation capacities via local um, local um, devices very well positioned on the moon and allowing a very precise navigation to, to land safely on the moon or to do whatever safely on the moon. Thank you very much, Hervé. I have one question for, uh, for Jan Werner. Jan, are you, can you hear me? Yes, of course, always, Donatella. <laughs> uh, um, we have heard uh, different needs, different uh, ideas. Uh, I would like to, uh, listen uh, to her here a little bit more on uh, what type of uh, incentives uh, and the initiatives uh, for encouraging uh, space and non-space business uh, can, can be delivered by space agency. What is the, the role of uh, the space agency to support uh, uh, the, these new businesses now that you, are flourishing? You had two parts in your question, incentives and roles, uh, and I would like to come first to the roles. Uh, so for me, it's obvious that uh, a space agency, and this is especially also ESA, has to have different roles in the future. One is, of course, the traditional one. Uh, together with industry, we are preparing a mission. We are taking care of the colors of the schools and all of this together with industry. This is one role. This will remain. But there are some other roles, which is one is public-private partnership, where we are sharing investments, where we are sharing risks in order to make something possible. And then our opinion is that this should then take, be taken up by industry and bring it to commercial success. The third role is where we are a customer to industry. That means we are asking industry, okay, 
uh, give us a certain service. So, for instance, we could say we have uh, something, we want to do science on the surface of the moon, so please bring us to the moon uh, and we will pay for that. Uh, we don't care how you do it, but uh, give us a price tag, uh, maybe in competition, and then uh, we say, okay, this is good. So we go to the, we, we take your offer and we go to the moon. And there is a final one, which is a broker function. And this uh, may be also very interesting now, especially with the moon uh, and the moon village. You heard today already several actors uh, being active in different areas. Now, many of these actors so far did not work together, but ESA knows all of them. And therefore, ESA can have a broker function by putting these different actors together so that together we can do more than just an individual organization or individual player. And uh, the incentive is, of course, not being done by the agencies, but the incentive should be commercialization, should be the action as such. Uh, if necessary, we have also missions at ESA to go to the moon. We heard it from RV, and uh, so we have also our missions. Uh, but this is not the incentive as such. The incentive should be to do some uh, commercial activities on the surface, which have a big range from energy to maybe even finally tourism. Uh, or communication or navigation or whatever so we don't know what is happening on the surface of the moon in the future so therefore this is the interest of individuals we are there to have the broker function we will support of course initial developments and all of this thank you thank you very much jan um, my last because time so is running before uh, handing over to to Oleg, I would like to ask a last question to John if he is still with us and see all the speakers. John, hi there. Hello. Um, I'm here. Hello. Um, from more, your point of view, from the Moon Village Association point of view, what do you think, what kind of cooperation uh, model the non-space business uh, would uh, ideally expect from companies? How can we match? Could we? Uh -huh. So um, I think that in terms of the, in terms of a business model for non-space companies, uh, I think that uh, uh, one opportunity for, uh, for example, for the major space players to uh, get uh, non-space companies to come in is to create uh, a special kind of public-private partnership, in particular uh, partnerships that are catalyzed by uh, a little bit of uh, government money that are, um, I'll say, fostered by existing uh, space players and which draw in the non-space companies to work on particular problems. So let's say it's an issue associated with thermal management and uh, it was identified by uh, ESA uh, through some workshop process where you involve lots of people. Here's a problem that needs to be solved. And there's a little bit of money, like maybe a, a third or a, or a half, maybe, and then you get an aerospace company to, to be the one who helps the non-aerospace player to put together a solution that can be integrated into the system plans of the aerospace company and the mission plans of the government agency. I think this hybrid approach where you have all three players coming together to make a, uh, a consortium uh, could in fact be a real accelerator uh, and could bring in a lot of non-traditional funding because the non-space player gets a lot of, has the potential to one, create new markets, two, create new technology and new intellectual property, and three, to have the, um, the public affairs uh, benefits of being involved in humanity going to the moon. So this kind of, uh, of uh, partnership between government, the big, the, the traditional players and the new small companies with a little bit of money is quite critical. Thank you very much, John. Now it's a really, we are really running out of time before handing over to Oleg. I would like to thank you all for your participation. Thank you MDA for the collaboration and uh, I hand over to, to Oleg for the conclusion. Thank you very much, Donatella. So some uh, preliminary conclusions, which I personally have 
drawn up from our today's conversation. Is there a place for non-space businesses uh, on the moon? Definitely yes. As uh, John uh, convincingly has shown us, uh, there are niches which, is, which are to be filled in by non-space businesses. So there is a reason for non-space businesses uh, to try moving to the eighth continent and uh, this way to diversify the activities. Do we have some examples already of the activities in this domain? Certainly, we have shown uh, today on, uh, by the examples of uh, European and Asian companies that there are already uh, firms moving in this direction and clearly seeing the possible application, application of their technologies uh, on the moon. What are possible business models uh, to be implemented? Uh, thanks to the last question by Donatella and the reply by John, we have discovered that there, are, there is so-called PPP, public-private partnership. There are examples of cooperation between a space agency and non-space company. I refer to the Hervé's presentation um, uh, when ESA uh, um, and the Ariane Group uh, cooperates uh, within the framework of the Pelican project. But I could also refer to the JAXA Toyota co cooperation, in particular Lunar Cruiser. Uh, probably uh, many of you know about this project. But also uh, we have uh, seen examples of uh, B2B cooperation, that is uh, space company to non-space company cooperation. And uh, already mentioned uh, planetary transportation systems, formerly PT scientists, uh, have uh, successfully uh, cooperated and continue to my knowledge to cooperate with Audi company. So, uh, now, uh, what could be the role of the Moon Village Association? And I am very pleased to say to you that uh, we are here to help to establish this, this dialogue, to continue uh, discussions on how uh, this kind of business could be beneficial for both space and non-space players, because we are an independent, non-biased platform, and we are here to help. From this point of view, um, I would like to tell you that uh, we plan to uh, analyze all the presentations made today, all the discussions, Q&A, and present uh, some uh, conclusions at our forthcoming annual event of the MBA on the 9th and 10th of November, uh, which is going to be held for the first time in the online format. On top of this, uh, I would like to invite you to visit our uh, completely revamped um, uh, web page devoted to the Moon Markets on the uh, moonvillageassociation.org site. Uh, presumably from the mid-November. And finally, um, I would like to share with you our intention to have a series of the follow-up events to this one, which will be dedicated to some particular non-space businesses, such as robotics, energy, but let us not forget about other kinds of businesses, uh, potentially also very interested in the subject, such as lawyers, for example, or insurers, etc. So please uh, stay tuned, follow uh, announcements on the MVA website, in mass media, etc., etc. My last words are words of gratitude. First of all, to our co-organizers, European Space Agency, Donatella, to you in particular, uh, to our amazing uh, management support team uh, at the Cyprus Space Exploration Organization. And of course, to all of you, uh, dear visitors and attendees of our workshop. Thank you very much. And we are very much looking forward to welcoming you at our future events. With this, I wish you all the best and say goodbye. Thank you again. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye.